Hey guys, this is Charles Pichuk from Audio Ape. Today we're going to look at using multiple camera inputs for use with QLab for your live show. So if you want to be able to switch cameras and do all kinds of other magical things during your shows with live cameras, this is what you want to be watching. So this new piece of hardware out here uh, called uh, ATEM Mini Switcher is by Blackmagic Design. They've kind of been leaders of broadcast and um, streaming cameras and camera inputs and outputs. So they've released this recent gem and it is just packed full of powerful features. So the way this thing works is if you look on the back, you have room for one, two, three, four camera inputs via HDMI. Um, I wouldn't worry about this, the HDMI out, that's just a monitor. And then you have a direct webcam out uh, right here that you're going to plug in USB-C, and that's going to go into your computer. Now QLab loves webcams, so that's how it likes to see all the camera input. So this is great. So it has everything built in right here. So you plug in your four cameras, and then you use this webcam out to connect to your computer running QLab. It does require some power. And this um, ATEM control via Ethernet, this is how you're going to control the camera switching. Because there's four cameras, you've got to be able to switch between them. Okay, And so you can manually switch between these cameras just by pushing the buttons, one, two, three, and four. Or you can use QLab to push those buttons for you in an automated way. So that's really what's going to be happening. And the beautiful thing about this is all the processing power of switching cameras and doing transitions, that's all going to lie and rest on this device and keep it off your computer running QLab. So once again, you got four cameras in one, two, three, four. This webcam goes out to your computer and QLab will see it. So it'll see it at just one camera. It won't see all four cameras at the same time. And the switcher will be doing the switching between the cameras cameras and the transitions. So all your all your computer will see is just one webcam and this thing will do all the switching and transitions and you'll control it using this ethernet port here and QLab will send those commands. So it really minimizes the resources needed on your computer. So now that you understand about the switcher a little bit, um, let's dive in and see how to connect it. For one, you're going to need a USB uh, Ethernet adapter, uh, either USB-C or anything you can do to get a usable USB port uh, on your computer because you're going to need a USB port on your computer in order to connect and talk to this device. Uh, I always go for the Apple certified stuff when it comes to adapters and dongles, uh, but you may have success with other things, but I would always start with the Apple branded one. Um, you're also gonna need um, a program called ATEM OSC. Now what this does is kinda acts like a translator between QLab and um, your hardware here. So basically, uh, we'll get into that a little bit more, but let's just try and connect your Blackmagic um, camera controller and connect it so we get everything talking. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, so right now my ATEM is connected. Um, now the way to do this is you have to set up in your system preferences. Now this is where I got all messed up. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out. There's a lot of rules that have to go into this. For one thing, you need to have the Apple USB uh, adapter connected and then connect it um, to your ATEM switcher. Now what you want to do is you want to use um, the IP address and you have to set it to manual. You have to take it off of DHCP. So it has to be in manual. That's the only way the ATEM Mini works. The ATEM Pro, I do believe, works on uh, DHCP, which is kind of auto-finding it. But manually is for the basic model. And what you want to do is you just set the IP address to this address. Now, this number can be anything, but just leave it at 100 and make sure the subnet mask is here the same. Make sure these numbers uh, match. Uh, your ATEM switcher uh, comes with a default IP address of 192.168.10.204, so that's fine. So that's going to work great with the address you're putting in. If you don't understand this, it's not a problem. Just make sure on your USB ad Apple uh, uh, adapter, you go to manually um, configure the IP and go ahead and put in this number. And then you're pretty much set up. The one thing that also was bothering me is every time I connected this adapter, it would lose connection 
uh, to the internet. So if you want connection to the internet, whether you're live streaming or whether you're just working on something, uh, you will need to set the priority of these uh, network adapters. So what I had going on was I had uh, I had set service order and I had the Wi-Fi underneath the USB adapter. So the internet was trying to come through here and there was no internet because this um, ethernet adapter is connected to the ATEM and not to the internet. So just make sure you take um, these and you arrange them in the order that you want. So whatever is actually feeding your internet, put it on the top and then put this um, USB adapter that's talking to the Blackmagic switcher underneath. Okay, so now you can retain internet activity. Uh, so make sure your IP addresses are set accordingly, hit apply if need be. And then that's pretty much it. After that, you will be able to connect um, ATEM OSC. So you just uh, go for a connection and it'll, you have to put in the address right here. I'm going to disconnect right now. So it's disconnected. You put in this address that is the default address of the ATEM. So if you actually look at the ATEM control software. Now, when I'm pushing these buttons virtually, it's actually changing the camera inputs on the hardware too, and the buttons are changing on the external hardware that's connected. Um, so if you want to see how it's connected or check the address, go to connection. And as you can see, this is the device's address. So that's how we need to set um, the uh, translator. So like I said, this is the translator app right here. And so you need it to set it to the same address that this one is on. And also um, these all need to be uh, coordinated with your Ethernet adapter. I know it's a lot, right? But once you get it set up, you're pretty much set. So again, this isn't the same number at the end because um, you don't want to have anything on this IP with the same uh, number at the end. These three must match. Almost think of it like a house delivery address. So this is the city, this is, no, this is the state, this is the city, this is the street, and this is a house number. So all different devices have a different house number. So just think of it like that, okay? So the house number for the Blackmagic switcher is this. So if I hit connect, automatically it's connected. And that's wonderful. That's what we want. Now let's get into actually using QLab to send those commands. Now again, you need to have this ATEM OSC up and running and connected in order for QLab to be able to send those messages and then to be heard, okay? So I am gonna give you a um, live look at, let me go ahead and pull up that ATEM uh, software again. So this way you guys are looking at um, what the hardware is doing. So if I actually pull up this control box, you'll be able to see live what the hardware is doing. So this is the virtual um, look at it, but if you look at the actual device, the buttons are lighting up like this. So let me go over to QLab now and let's go ahead and get QLab set up so it can read. Um, let me just go for a blank uh, template default. Great. Uh, bring up a bunch of stuff uh, from my show. Now what we need to do is go into the network settings. So you go into network and we need to have a place where it can listen for, because um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sending messages from QLab to this little interpreter program and this interpreter program is going to send it over to your hardware to switch the cameras. It sounds involved, but it's very stable. Uh, and a lot of people use this. So let's go to new patch and we're going to call it ATEM. Uh, switcher, great. And then leave all this on automatic and label this localhost because you're actually doing it within the system here. Go host, great. And then what you wanna do is, because uh, locally these two are talking, this program and this program are talking together. But you see how there's a number in the top right here, by default it's 333. You need to go ahead and give that ID number to this and then you are all set. Uh, now you can actually go in and when you want to change a camera or you want to send some information to this What you would do is go into network queue drop one of these guys down here and Go into and select the ATEM switcher and now you're like, well, what do I send? Well, here's a list of the commands right here. So addresses it'll have all kinds of different things so what you want to do is maybe switch to camera 2 you basically copy this guy right here. You have to actually have the backslash at the beginning. Boom, copy, put this in here, 
and then as you see right now it's on camera four but when I send this it switches to camera two okay so I'm using what's called network cues and I'm sending them to this translator program and then this translator program that's connected to my uh, controller software so in QLab I am going and you could just uh, copy and paste uh, these all day long and switch from camera one to two and you would probably le re relabel these two also so if this is camera two you'd say cam two this is camera one so cam one this is camera three cam three whoops uh-huh and let's go ahead and make this the fourth cam two cam or beautiful and so that's it so as you go through here you can see how easily you can switch between camera one there's camera two here it's going to switch to camera one to camera three to camera four um, and like I said you can automate that um, you know in, in a group in a timeline so I can go ahead and group these together and in the timeline, you could say, okay, you know, in two minutes, it's going to go to two, 20 seconds, uh, 10 seconds is going to move from camera two to three, and so on and so forth. Now, you, not just switching cameras that's available, you can actually do all these values. So you can change the type of wipe, you can change the exposures. Um, there's just a ton of stuff that you can do. Um, and commands that you can send to this. Now, like I said, we're looking at the virtual control board, but this is basically what my hardware is doing also. So as you can see, now you basically can uh, program in uh, somebody who's like a director. It's almost like calling the show, but doing it automatically. Um, now you don't have to do it in a timeline here. You can also do it um, just as a hotkey or just as a command in the line where you hit that and it switches the camera. So. I know it sounds like a lot, but really all it is is this piece of hardware is connected via USB to your computer, and then uh, this program talks to that hardware, and QLab talks to this program. Okay, guys. I want to see you guys use multicam. I know it's been a feature everybody's wanted. And in order to get it in, you basically just connect via USB-C. Let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to connect via USB-C. I'm going to pull this down and then I'm going to go here and whoops, I got to actually set up the camera. So I'm going to go into here into video and there it is. Black magic design done. So now when I hit this camera, um, it's actually going to uh, be outputting. Whoops. Uh, boom, boom, boom. It's going to be outputting. Uh, it's going to output to uh, from the ATEM switcher. It's going to output. There's nothing plugged in right now, but basically it would be doing a live camera. And so you have to have the camera open and running, and then you can switch camera angles, and they'll be switching around. So as long as you understand how to use cameras, you will use that whole ATEM switcher that has these four inputs um, just as one camera. And so as long as the camera is live here on QLab, you can use these uh, network cues to switch the camera feeds and do fade outs and, and all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, you can actually fade the camera itself uh, just by using a simple fade cue. And it would simply fade the camera out and it would stop. And then you're back to your logo or whatever is up on your video screen. So that's how to use live cameras and how to use the switcher. I hope this was informative and gives you guys a jump start on how to get a multi-cam automated in QLab. This is Audio Ape. We'll see you at showtime.